Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Blitzkrieg. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full two-player game. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because this game was one of the winners of the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of the channel. If you enjoy videos like this one and you want to directly support the channel so that they keep being made in the future, then please go to patreon.com slash Games, and when you're there, you'll find a bunch of ways that you can help things out, and many of them come with perks, like voting on videos like this one, as well as watching videos like this early and advertisement free. Now, I'd also like to ask that if you like this video in particular, that you please then click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. And also, if while you're watching this, you see any turns where you think we should have done something differently, then please comment down below and let me know what your alternate turn option would have been. I always like saying those things. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of this two-player-only game. Now, thematically, as it says on the front of the box, this is World War II in 20 minutes. In this game, one player is going to be the Axis and the other player will be the Allies, and as we play through the game, we are going to fight in multiple theaters. On a player's turn, they are going to take one of their tokens from behind their shield and put it face up onto the empty spot of an open campaign. And an open campaign is essentially the top row that has at least one empty spot within one of these five different theaters. After placing the token down, you then advance the battle track according to the number on the tile. So, for example, if we put this right over here, it has a three, and then we move the battle track one, two, three spaces towards us, which is also towards the side of the current player, and you can see at the end of the track there's also an icon to match. After moving the battle track, if you covered up any icons, you can then perform those actions. This icon right here lets you draw another tile out of your bag, and you draw one tile at the end of each of your turns. So drawing an extra tile means you are going to increase your hand size. Now this icon is the opposite for your opponent. When you cover that up, you are going to bomb them, and they will have to discard a random tile from their hand. So that effectively lowers their hand size by one. There are other benefits like this, which lets you move the battle tokens from other theaters, as well as this, which lets you move the battle token in this theater farther forward. And when a campaign is closed, that is the moment where these battle tracks will become important. A campaign is closed once there are tokens filling the entire row, and then at that point, the player whose token is farther on their battle track side is going to get this number of victory points. Those points are tracked up here. You can simply slide this token along, and this war victory track is one of the two ways the game will end. Specifically, if someone gets to 25 points, that will be an end game trigger. And the other thing is if at the start of your turn, you have no tiles in your hand because you were bombed too much by your opponent, well, in that case, you are also going to lose the game. Now, there are other icons out here that I haven't described just yet, and I will go into detail about how all of this works while we are playing the game. On that note, I think we should start things off, and we are going to be playing as the Axis player, and the Axis player always goes first. Now, at the start of the game, each player took three random tiles out of their bag, and these are the three that we have to use. As I mentioned in the overview, for our turn, we have to choose one of these tiles, and we have to place it into an open campaign. Once again, an open campaign is the top row of one of these theaters that has at least one empty location, and obviously, since no tokens have been placed out, all five of these top rows are open campaigns. Looking back at our hand, you'll notice we actually have three different types of tokens. This is a ship, that is a tank, and that is a plane. Now these icons are very important because those restrict where we can actually place these tokens down onto the board. You'll notice on the board there are brown spots, blue spots, as well as blue and brown spots. All ships must go on a spot that has at least some blue. All of the tanks have to go onto a spot that has at least some brown. And the planes can go onto any spot on the board. So we have to place one of these and I think we'll just go with the one we used as an example in the overview. Let's place this three value ship onto this blue spot and then we will advance the battle track three times towards our side. After that, the industrial production icon will activate and that lets us draw a random tile out of our bag so we can add that into our hand and it looks like it's another one value plane. After that, we finished everything that came from placing that tile so the final thing we do on our turn is draw another tile out of the bag and it looks like we found a one value ship. So no matter what, next turn, we are placing a one value tile. All right, our turn is done. So now our opponent can place one tile and they are also going to place a ship. And in this case, they're gonna go down here into the Pacific Ocean. That's gonna move the battle track two spaces towards them. 
and then unfortunately they are bombing us. I briefly mentioned this in the overview, but the way this works is we now have to randomly discard one of the tiles in our hand. So we can mix all of these up and then choose one of them, and it looks like the one we're losing is gonna be a one value plane. So just like that, our hand size was increased and then we were bombed back to the starting hand size of three. The allies can finish their turn by drawing a random tile from their bag, and now it's time for us to go again. Honestly, I wish we had some higher value tiles over here. The allies are one step away from being able to close down this campaign, and that will get them a couple of points. Although there is something that we can do to try and defend the Pacific Ocean without placing a tile over there. Now that involves these type of bonuses, and I think that's what we're going to do. Let's place this one value tank right over here into Africa and the Middle East. That will advance this battle token once. And then that bonus right there says we can push a battle token three times towards us in any other theater. With that in mind, let's target the Pacific Ocean. So we'll move this token one, two, three spaces. And just like that, it's on our side, even though we haven't put any tiles over here. Now it's possible our opponents could swing it back over there by putting a two or higher tile there, but we don't know what they have in their hand, and I think that this will still be worth it to us. So that's going to finish our turn, which means we can draw one tile out of the bag. Ah, and we found our general. Now each of the players has one general and one admiral, and when you place these down, they move the battle token once, plus one for every land or ocean type of tile that you have in that area. The general counts as a land type and the admiral counts as sea. So if we put this over here, for example, that would be one plus one for that land type of tile, and that would push this token twice. It's worth pointing out that planes count as one for the general as well as the admiral. I also want to point out that our bag of tiles is identical to the bag of tiles that the ally player started with. The colors are slightly different, but we functionally have the same set of tiles that we are each working with. The allies can take their turn now, and they're going to put a value 3 tank over here into Western Europe. They've decided to cover up this spot, and that is going to let them do a research action, but first of all, they move this battle token three spaces backwards. When they research, they're going to take a random research token from these stacks, and that will be added into their bag. Now, these are more powerful and varied actions compared to the ones we have in our base bags, and if you are able to draw it out of the bag, then you can use it. After that, they now get to draw a tile, and of course they're hoping to find that research tile they just put in there. Alright, it's time for us to go again, and I think we need to go to Western Europe. Currently, it is tied up, and there is one open spot left, and if this spot gets filled, then the campaign will be scored, and if this token is on our side, then we will get those points. On top of that, this icon right here is one victory point, so just by placing on top of that, we will gain one point. Now, this can have any type of unit placed on top of it, so I figure let's use this one value ship, and we can save these two for other circumstances where we might need them more. This will go right over there. That will then get us one victory point, which is the first point of the game, and then this will move over once. After that, we can close and score this campaign. Once again, that happens once all of the spots in the top row have been filled by any tiles. In this case, the battle token is on our side, so that means we are going to gain two victory points. So we are now up to three, and it's worth noting if this token was past this one, then that would be an extra point we'd gain. And also, if this token was past the two, then we would gain two more points. It's worth noting you just score that, not both of them together. So this is effectively plus one point, and that is effectively another plus one point. Now, while we're on the topic of this battle token being over here, I now like to talk about closing out theaters. If you're ever able to get the battle token onto the final spot on your side of this track, then the overall theater is going to close. The way this works is you're going to close each of the campaigns that are still open, and the player whose side this is on is going to get all of those points, and they can perform the action of every single empty spot within that campaign as it closes. So the player would close out each of the campaigns and get those points as well as a bunch of actions, and then the theater would be closed, which means no one could play there for the rest of the game. Obviously, closing a theater by getting the token to the end is a very powerful effect, and it's something we would like to keep in our back pocket, but that's also going to take quite a bit of work, especially considering this token is just barely on our side at the moment. The last thing I'd like to mention about closing out a campaign is what happens if this token is right there in the middle. In that case, 
both of the players are going to gain all of the applicable points. So we would move both of those up. And the reason for that is because this victory point track is one of the game's end game triggers. I mentioned this briefly during the overview, but if at the end of a player's turn, they've met or crossed the 25 point line, that is going to trigger the end of the game. If we as the Axis players hit that, then the Allied player would get one more turn. However, if the Allied player reached or exceeded that, then the game would end immediately. So no matter what, the Axis player always takes the first turn, and the Allied player will always take the last. At that point, the player who's farthest up this track is going to win the game, and if there is a tie on this track, then the Allied player is going to win that tie. Now there's technically another way that you can actually end the game, and it does not involve this track at all, and that has to do with running out of tiles in your hand. We can have tiles bombed out of our hand like we have already seen, and there are also ways for us to play more than one tile out of our hand, which is a very powerful turn, but also reduces our hand size. If at the start of your turn you have no tiles in front of you, then you forfeit the game, losing and giving the victory to your opponent. So if the game ends like this, it's possible that players won't take the same number of turns, but usually the game ends with at least one player reaching 25 on the war victory track. Well, our turn is coming to an end, so we can draw a new tile. And it looks like we found our Admiral. Once again, this acts just like the General, except it interacts with the ships that we have on the board. And actually, that might be pretty good to place over here into Western Europe on that spot, because that's the only spot currently that takes blue. Because if we did that, that would be worth one, two, three. Now, we'll consider if we want to do that later on. We could also try to get more planes and ships over there before we put our Admiral down. Well, our turn is done, so that means the allies can go, and they are going to put this value 2 ship right over here into the Pacific Ocean. That's going to move this token just barely back over towards their side, and then they can do some research, which is going to put this token right here into their bag, and then after that, they can score the top campaign in the Pacific Ocean. This is going to get them two victory points, and then they can finish their turn by drawing a tile out of their bag. Well, it's time for us to go, and there are two closed campaigns out here already, and that means there are some new campaign options that we can go for. In particular, I like the idea of going here, because that lets us research twice, taking two of these powerful tiles and placing those into our bag, which makes us even more likely to draw those. Now, we could put our Admiral over there, but we don't have any other ships, so that would just be a one-value tile, and that feels like a waste. So instead, let's send our plane over there. Remember, planes can go onto any spot. We'll go right here. That will move this back to the center, and then we can draw two of these and place those directly into our bag. All right, our turn is over, and now we can draw one tile, and we did not find a research tile yet. After that, the allied player can go. After considering their options, they're going to head back over here to Western Europe. So far, these Western theaters have been very popular in this game. They're going to put a two-value tank onto that spot. That's going to push this twice towards them, and unfortunately, they're going to bomb us once again. So we're going to randomly discard one of these back into our bag. And it's going to be our general. They can finish their turn by drawing a tile, and now we get to go. We only have two tiles, which is lowering our flexibility, and that's unfortunate because I'd really like to go there, but neither of these tiles can actually go onto that spot. One option that is available to us, though, is this one. That would let us draw a new tile, which would once again get us back to a hand size of three, and that is probably an important thing to do. So I think let's send this ship right over there. That's going to push this over, and then we will draw one tile, and then after we do that, we will draw another one at the end of our turn. This is a value two plane, and then at the end of our turn, we pull this one out, and we have still not managed to find any of those research tiles yet. Either way, I like the idea of having these value two tiles. That's certainly better than the options that we've had for the last couple of turns. Well, the allies can now take their turn, and they've decided to fly a plane over here to Southeast Asia. They're going to cover up this spot, and that's going to get them two victory points just for going there, and that will also push this battle token over twice towards them. After that, they can draw a tile, and now we can go, and I feel like maybe we should send this ship over here to the Pacific Ocean. That would move this over twice, which is certainly great, and then that would also let us move another battle token twice. And with that in mind, I think we're going to do this and move the Western Europe token back over to our side. This is hotly contested over here, and by putting this on that spot, there's just one spot left over, and maybe we could actually close this on our next turn. Now, we are only three spaces away from the middle, so if our opponent could put a value three token there, that would equalize this, and I'm just hoping that is not a thing that'll happen. Well, we can finish our turn by drawing a tile, and now the allies can go. The allies can now take their turn, 
and they've decided to head back to Southeast Asia. They potentially could have played over here, but instead they are going to go onto this spot. That is going to get them one victory point, and it will also advance this two spaces over, which puts it now into the plus one victory point spot. In Southeast Asia, there's just one spot left before this campaign does get closed. So that means they are putting some pressure on us where we could close the Pacific Ocean, but that would leave Southeast Asia open for the Allies to close that and get those points. The Allies can finish their turn by drawing a tile, and now it's time for us to go. Now, realistically, there are two spots that are drawing my eye, and we could put any token onto either of them. Now, on this location, we could put our Admiral, and that would get us one, two, three, four movement on this track. That would bring us all the way over here, and that would close getting us four victory points. Obviously, that would be leaving Southeast Asia open for the Allies to gain three points, but getting four points is more than three, so that's certainly something to consider. Now, the issue with that plan, I suppose, is the fact that there is no bonus on this spot, but there is a bonus over there. If we were to play one of our tokens on this location, we could advance one of the other battle tracks once towards us, which might not seem like a lot, but that can certainly add up. All we need to do is place this one plane over there in order to push this down, and then the allies would only be getting two points instead of three, so that would certainly be a win, and then of course gaining that plus one somewhere else is a good thing. But if we do that, we are risking the allies being able to come back over here in the Pacific Ocean. They did not play there on their last turn, but of course they did draw another tile, and maybe that tile will give them the three power that they need to draw this token back to at least the middle. Up to this point, I suppose I've been fixated on these, but there are other options out here. There's Eastern Europe, and it only has two of these spots before that gets closed. So we could send perhaps uh, this plane onto that spot. We would then move this over three times, and then we would be threatening two different campaigns with the token on our side to close on our next turn to get some points as well. There is something to be said for just spreading out and being threatening in lots of different theaters instead of just going crazy on one theater over and over again. We could go here as well and increase our hand size to 4, which is also something to consider. Honestly, this is starting to look like a better option, and a big part of that is because if we closed either of these theaters, that would then open up these options down below for our opponent, and they could once again bomb us or just get an easy two victory points. By going up here, we are not giving them those options. Well, I think I've convinced myself, let's go to Eastern Europe with this two plane. We'll go there and that'll move this one, two, three times to make it even more threatening and harder for our opponent to bring this back at least to the middle with just one token. I'd love to increase our hand size, but I think getting that one extra bump is really going to increase the possibility that we are going to be the ones to be able to score this. All right, that's finished our turn, so we can draw one tile. And we got a value one plane. After that, the allies can go. And it looks like they've decided to ignore the threats that we have in Eastern Europe and the Pacific Ocean, and they're going to head right over to Southeast Asia. This is a one value plane, so that'll push this over once, and now they can advance one other battle token, and they've decided to push this one right back to the middle. After that, they can score the Southeast Asia campaign. That is going to be two plus one, or three points to them, and that brings them up to eight. All right, they can finish their turn by drawing a tile. And now we can go. Now, obviously, we could close either of these campaigns and get a bunch of points, but we could also go down here to Southeast Asia and take either of these nice bonuses. I like the idea of bombing them to lower their options, but I also like the idea of getting two victory points. We've got a couple of planes, so those could go anywhere, and I think that is going to be worth it. It would also be good to start pulling this back a little bit if we want to be at all competitive in Southeast Asia before it fully closes. I suppose with just three tiles going down here, it's unlikely we'll be able to drag it back over that line, so I figure we may as well be the one to get these two points. Our opponent would probably go onto that spot to take the points themselves if we leave it up to them. So let's send a plane down there. That is going to move this over once and get us two points, bringing us to five. All right, that is finished our turn, so we can draw a tile. And ooh, we found our first research tile. We did have a couple of those in our bag, and let's now look at the details of this one in particular. For that, let's look at the back of our player screen, and as you can see, there's a bunch of symbols, most of which I've talked about so far. Now, we have just drawn the scientist, and when we look down here, it says we can place this onto any battle space in any campaign. Now, that might not seem that great, but any battle space means you can actually go deeper than the campaign says. That means you can actually go farther down than you normally would be able to. So, for example, we could place the scientist there to bump one of our other tracks three times, and we could also go there, and that would let us draw a research tile and add it directly into our hand instead of shuffling it into our bag. 
We could also do something like that, which would let us draw two tiles from our bag, which would really increase our hand size as well as our options. And the more draws that we get, the more likely we are to find the other research tiles that we've already tossed into that bag. So we're going to have lots of options on our next turn, but before we move on, let's maybe look at some of these other icons, in particular this icon here. Now this shows up on one of the standard tiles that we have in our bag, as well as on some of the research tiles, and it's called Blitz, and it lets you immediately place a second tile on your turn. Now you don't draw an extra tile, so that means you actually lower your hand size, but of course playing two tiles at once could help you quickly close a campaign when your opponent least expects it. With regards to these research tiles, there are some other effects that we have not seen just yet. There is a single spy, and when you play that out, it copies the unit slash weapon token that was just placed by an opponent. Another option is a nuclear bomb. That will add 7 to the battle track, but then it lowers you down twice on all other theaters that are not yet closed. So that's very powerful where you put it, but it could potentially be pretty bad for the other theaters. You probably want to make this a bit of a closer. Over here, there are a couple of Nippon exclusive tiles that are shoveled in here. This is the square version of Blitzkrieg, and it comes with the Nippon expansion, which is on the backside of this map, and it allows you to play the Axis versus Japan. Now, whether you play this side or the other, you can still shovel these two in. This is a Partisan, and it gives plus one to a battle track if the token is on your side of the track, but it gives plus three if the token is on the other side, so it's very good at bringing back tokens. Down here, there's Inspired Leadership, and this adds one to the battle track, and then it also says that you activate the battle space effect underneath it twice. Now, there is a Godzilla that you only use when playing on the Nippon side, and it's just a very powerful token that's not affected by admirals or generals. And lastly, there is this Task Forces, and these are associated with high-value tiles, but that X means that you do not perform the icon effects where you place tiles with that X down. I know I just threw a whole bunch of icons at you, but I figured at this point I wanted to show some more of the options. And at this point, our turn is done, so let's see what the allied player decides to do. After considering their options, the allies have decided they are going to bomb us once again. That's going to push this token forward once, and now we're going to lose one of these, and I'm really hoping we don't lose the scientist. Now you'll notice it does have a yellow back, so we actually have to shuffle these up and then grab one blindly. And that is going to be this one. Ah, nice, it's the plane. That was actually the best hit for us. Both of these are really good tiles for us. The allies can draw a tile and then we can go. And honestly, I think we're just going to ignore Southeast Asia over here. The allies are going to be able to score that by putting really any tile down, and that will get them five points. And we just need to start focusing, I think, on getting the points that we can out here. Now, we could send our scientist onto that spot, which does seem pretty good. But I think instead, let's maybe just go harder over here on the Pacific Ocean to start getting a bunch of points for ourselves. I suppose that is going to unlock these options for our opponents, and they could bomb us again, but they might not have a tile to actually go on the bomb spot. You know, that is starting to make me reticent, though. We could go over here and score that to get a couple of points, and that would not unlock any bombing spots for our opponents. I suppose the issue with going up here, though, is that we did lose that plane. I was happy about it, but now I'm not so much, because I was hoping to send the plane there. We could put the scientist there, but that seems like an awful waste of a great power, and this admiral can't even go onto that spot. You know what? I think we're just going to go to the Pacific Ocean and hope that this works out well for us. It is going to get us some points. We can send this Admiral right over there, and we have two ships as well as a plane. So that's going to be one, two, three, four that we're going to bump this. So we go one, two, three, four, and we unfortunately don't get any benefit, but then we will get three plus one or four victory points, which puts us in the lead with nine. After that, we can draw a new tile out of the bag, and the new one is going to be this one. It's a value two ship. All right, the allies can go, and they are going to place this tank right over here. That is definitely a relief to see that we're not getting bombed, although I suppose them getting two points is also not great. But if they bombed us, we'd have just one tile left in front of us, which would certainly be a problem. Either way, they are going to gain two victory points, which puts them back in the lead, and either they could not play on a blue spot, or maybe they just chose not to and decided that the points were more important. Of course, having points is the main way that you win this game, and that's helped push them back in the front. They can finish their turn by drawing a tile, which means it's now time for us to go, and I think we are going to need to bomb them. It's very possible they just drew a tile that would let them do this, and we have a ship, so I think we should use it. We'll place that right over there. That'll push this forward two times, and we are just one spot away from an extra point, but of course this isn't closing yet, and now we're going to bomb our opponent. So they're going to lose one of these from their hand, and it's going to be this one here. Our turn is done, so we can draw a new tile. 
and we found a value 3 tank. That certainly could be useful. All right, the allies can go, and they've decided that they would like to increase their hand size after being bombed, so they're going to go right here. That's going to push this towards them once, and then they'll draw a tile, and then after that, they will finish their turn by drawing another tile. Well, it's now time for us to go, and we could put this tank right there. That would move this forward one, two, three spaces, which would get us an extra victory point, which isn't nothing. But honestly, I feel kind of weird using that three tank on that spot where it's a done deal. We are going to score this when that happens. We could instead use that tank over there. That would swing this back to our side and score us three points, which is good. But of course, that would then open these up to our opponents, and both of those icons are pretty great. I suppose another option is this over here. We could put the tank on that spot, and that would push this over that one point location, so we'd get three points, and we'd increase our hand size. Going over there would not give us any other benefit. I think that actually might push this over the edge for us, so I think we're going to go for it. We'll put the tank there, this will go one, two, three, and then we'll draw a tile from our bag. Let's see what we get. Nice, that's a value two tank. Now this is going to close, and we're going to get 2 plus 1 or 3 points, so that's going to bring us up to 12, and we're once again in the lead. We can finish our turn by drawing a tile. Ooh, and we found our other 3 value ship. There's only 2 of those in the bag. Well, the allies can now take their turn, and they've decided to drop their general over here into Western Europe. I definitely did not see that coming. They have 3 tanks over here, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. That'll move this all the way up to the plus 1 point spot. After that, the campaign closes, and they will get 3 plus 1, or 4 victory points. That's finished their turn, which means we can go, and they have opened this up as a possibility. Now, I talked about maybe going there with our scientist earlier on, but we've had some other more important things to get to, and honestly, keeping this scientist in our back pocket to potentially grab 2 victory points could be worth it later on in the game, as long, of course, as they don't get bombed out of our hand. Now, if we send either of these over there, that is a little worrisome because, of course, there's just two other spots, and this is five away from the center. That was a really good play by our opponent. Part of me doesn't want to put any tokens over here to make it slower and harder for these five victory points to be gained. Instead, we could go to other spots where maybe we have a bit more of an advantage to try and leverage those so that our opponent feels like they can't go to Western Europe. With that in mind, I think let's go to Eastern Europe. We'll go there with our tank, so that is going to move this over two times, and this is pretty far over, and that is going to let us research twice. So that is two more of these powerful tiles into our bag. We've got a whole bunch of them in there now, and hopefully we'll start drawing more of them. Well, let's draw one and see how lucky we get. And we found, ooh, oh wow, we found a nuclear bomb. I just talked about this one a few minutes ago. It moves a battle track seven times, but moves all of the other ones to the other direction. Looking out at the board, I'm very happy to see that our opponent cannot bomb either of these out of our hand, because I'm pretty excited about them. Either way, at this point, our turn is done, which means the allies can go, and they are going to head to Western Europe and place onto that spot there. This will move the battle track three times, and then they are going to research a tile and put it directly into their hand, and fortunately we know it can't be a nuclear bomb, since there's only one of those and we already have it. Their turn is now done. That means we can go, and honestly, I kind of feel like we should send this nuclear bomb over here to Southeast Asia. That would move this token 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so we would get these 4 points instead of the allies. They've been holding off on filling this for a while, assuming they would take it at some point in the future. It did seem like it was pretty safe. Now, if we did that, we'd move all of the other tracks 2 spaces in the other direction. And honestly, I think that's probably going to be just fine. That would swing Africa over to our opponent. But we have such a big lead in the Pacific Ocean and Eastern Europe that I think we can suffer two going back. So yeah, here comes the nuclear bomb. We're going to put it right over there. This will then move seven spaces over. And then we'll go back twice on all of the other theaters. That does mean that the Allies just got to another point on this track. But honestly, if we were planning on kind of ignoring this, they were probably going to get there anyway. Now we can close this campaign in Southeast Asia. And that is going to get us four points. All right, our turn is done, and the allies are definitely reeling from that unexpected attack. We can, of course, draw a tile, and we found a value 2 plane. The allies can take their turn, and they are going to keep going to Western Europe. They're going to place this plane right over there. That's going to move this over once, and then they can move any of the other tracks three times, as long as those theaters aren't closed. Obviously, Southeast Asia is closed now, so there's nothing anyone can do over there. With that three, they are going to hit Eastern Europe, pushing this three spaces back. That's going to finish their turn. 
and now we get to go, and we've got some pretty good tiles in our hand. Now, part of me feels like maybe now is a good time to go to the Pacific Ocean. We could just grab those six points, which would bring us from 16 up to 22. And remember, our goal is 25, and 22 is just three points back from there. That seems like it would really put us in the lead, but of course the allies are just one tile away from gaining seven points, and that would bring them up to 21. Honestly, I don't think our opponents can really mess with us over here now that we've seen that nuclear bomb come out. So I think let's take this opportunity to send our scientist to any spot on the board, and we'll just go there to get a guaranteed two victory points. The game is starting to get a little bit close, and there's some pretty big swings coming, and those two extra points could make or break whether or not we win the game. So those are going to bring us up to 18, and now we can finish our turn. Wow, we found another really powerful tile. We're still not grabbing some of those research tiles in our bag, but I'm not complaining about a three tank. All right, the allies can go, and they're going to use one of these research tiles, and that is the Partisan. As I mentioned before, this gives you one move on the track if the token is on your side, or three moves on the track if it's not, and they're going to send this Partisan over to Eastern Europe. That is going to gain them one victory point, and this token is on the opposite side for them, so this counts as a three, and that will go one, two, three. And it seemed like this was so far over, but then a combination of a nuclear attack, an allied strategic advantage, and a partisan has brought it right back to the middle. The allies are going to finish their turn by drawing a tile, and now we get to go. Now honestly, I feel like we should probably go to Eastern Europe. That would be enough to push this over so that we would score it although that would unlock all of these as opportunities for our opponents. But either way, I still think we should probably do this. These three tiles are all quite powerful, but I feel tempted to send the plane. It is nice and flexible, but then again, I don't really need a three value over here. So I think we're going to do it, and we have one of each type for the stronger one that we can use on a future turn. So this plane will move the token towards us twice, and then this will close, and we are going to gain three points. That's finished our turn, and we have 21 points, so this game is super close. In fact, our opponent can tell that we are one token away from getting over 25, but remember, if we reach or pass 25, the allies will always be able to take one more turn. After considering their options, they're going to head to Eastern Europe, and they're going to go onto this plus three in a different theater spot. That's going to move this back to the center, and then they are going to move this one, two, three spaces over. So that has reached the very end, and that's going to close out this theater even without this spot being filled in. So it looks like the allies are going to get five plus two or seven points, and that will bring them from 15 all the way up to 22. Once again, if there were any visible icons in this theater that just got closed, the allies would perform all of those icons, but in this case, that is not what happened. They figured placing this over here to also close that without having to spend a turn to place onto that spot seemed like a pretty good plan for them. All right, that's going to finish their turn, which means we now get to go. Ooh, and we drew our Blitz plane. It offers zero with regards to the track, but of course it lets us place another tile, and putting two tiles down does give us some extra opportunities. While this doesn't move the track, it does activate the bonuses underneath. So we could, for instance, place both of these down over here. We could bomb our opponent and then push this token over five times, and then there'd just be one open spot over there. Another thing that we could do is send our three-value ship over there. That would get us five plus two or seven points for closing this down. And then we could also bomb our opponent with that plane if we wanted to, or maybe just grab another victory point. You know what? I think that is going to be the best bet for us at the moment. Let's send this ship over here, moving this one, two, three, and then we'll put the plane down. Although, technically, I got that backwards. We have to send the plane first, and that will let us play another tile, which will be that one over there. Sorry, I just got a little excited there. So, technically, we played this one first, and that gave us one victory point. And then we put that over there and advance that, and now we can score it. So that is going to get us 5 plus 2, or 7 victory points. We were at 22, so 7 is going to bring us all the way up to 29. Well, that's finished our turn, and that's actually the last turn for us in the game. With that in mind, I'm just going to peek in the bag. I'm curious about some of these research tiles we got. This would have been a 5-value tank, but it would have nullified any effect underneath. And this one, oh, it's a 4-value plane that nullifies the effect. Those are really strong. Now, I say that was our last turn, because of course we met or exceeded 25, so now the allied player can take the last turn, because again, they always take the last turn when the end game is triggered by this track. Well, the allied player can now take that last turn, and they've decided to start with a Blitz bomber plane of their own. 
they're going to send this right over here, and that is going to bomb us. Technically, we should have another tile, although it doesn't really matter. They're only bombing over here, I think, because they want to try and somehow close this campaign. Either way, we are going to discard one of these randomly, and then after that, they are going to place another tile, and yep, it has another Blitz icon. This is one of the research tiles, and it's a tank, so they are going to put it right over here, and that is going to shift this once towards them. And since that has a Blitz icon, they can once again play another tile, and that is a value one tank that's going to go over there. Now, technically, they also should have increased this two more times because of that effect, and then this pushes it over one more, and just like that, they somehow put three tiles down. They actually had four tiles in their hand, and they've been saving at least one of those for a few rounds, hoping for the right opportunity to strike. So we had an unexpected campaign closure over here in Eastern Europe, and that is going to get them six plus zero, or just six points. They were at 22, so that's going to bring them all the way up to 28, and that's also going to bring the game to an end. It looks like we have won, and just barely, because remember, if these are tied, then the allied player breaks the tie and wins, and they were just one point away from that, and they were actually just one battle track bump away from getting an extra point. So if this had been a two, then that would have given them the game. It was so close there at the end. But fortunately, we were able to just barely squeak out the win, and that has completed a full game of Blitzkrieg, and that is also going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, and please, if you saw any turns where you thought maybe we should have done something differently, then comment down below and let me know what you think. And also, just let me know what you think about this game. I personally quite like it, and I think there are some really cool tension points that exist here. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.